It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined today by Mitch O'Farrell. He is a councilman in the city of Los Angeles, and he, like so many Americans, is mourning the loss of 49 individuals in Orlando. What's so devastating about this loss is it's an unspeakable crime, but we keep speaking about these crimes. We lost 32 at Virginia Tech, 27 at Sandy Hook, 23 at Luby's Cafeteria in Colleen, 21 at McDonald's in San Ysidro. It just goes on and on, sir. Um, well, first of all, Brad, thanks for having me mm -hmm. on the show, and thanks for bringing up the Orlando tragedy. Uh, and it's inexcusable that in this day and age we still have assault weapons, military-style assault weapons, easily at the hands of people who should not have them. Uh, and I think what this latest um, uh, incident um, tells us is that, A, we should have done something about assault weapons a long time ago, and B, we absolutely must have the resolve to ban military-style assault weapons. It's interesting you mention that because Los Angeles as a city has been working to engage in its own gun control efforts. Um, in October, there was an ordinance passed to require handguns to be locked up. Then in August, a vote to ban firearm magazines with rounds of 10 ammunition or more. Um, we know there are cities, I believe in Highland Park, Illinois, there was an effort to ban these types of assault weapons and the Supreme Court let that stand. Mm -hmm. And so arguably it could be done? It could be done. It's been done before. Uh, there was a, an assault weapons ban that was in place for 10 years. It in was the lifted. wake of, was it San Ysidro or I think it may have been a different incident? It I know Diane Feinstein right. was instrumental in that. It was from 94 to Stockton. 04. Stockton. Stockton. The Stockton right. incident. And so under the Bush administration, the Bush 2 administration, it was lifted. Right. Um, and you're right. It withstands uh, uh, scrutiny uh, and it withstands the false premise that it is a violation of the Second Amendment. So what we have is we have the, the gun lobby and the NRA and, and all of their cronies mm -hmm. who have this perverse and corrupt interpretation of the Second Amendment. But, but and, and, and we can do something about this and uh, we must galvanize to make sure it happens. So there's no doubt in California uh, the supporters of your position are holding sway. Yes. The problem is, is that California borders Arizona and Nevada and Oregon and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so we can put Mexico aside for a second, but just our sister states. Right. And if they have laws, I mean, I believe with regard to San Bernardino, the weapon used illegal in California, but I think bought in Arizona. It was an AR-15. Bought. Which is yeah. a similar weapon that was used right. in Orlando. Well, you just made the case that it needs to become the law of the land mm. in the United States. But we if, know. if we really care about the well-being of children and people of whatever diverse group there is, if we really care about Americans and we really care about life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, as a country, uh, we will ban military-style uh, assault let's, weapons. Let's... And it is up to the Senate and the Congress to pass this gun legislation, and the majority of Americans want it, by the way. But what's interesting, and you know this, you're an elected official, those that are in support of gun control don't tend to vote on the issue, whereas those that oppose gun control do. I mean, there are those that believe that Al Gore lost the 2000 election because he lost Tennessee, he lost Kentucky, or uh, uh, West Virginia, states that Democrats had won mm -hmm. on the gun issue. I think that that it's time that voters connect the two opposing values that you just stated. We know that most Americans support sensible gun control and an assault weapons ban. They need to also realize that those who that they vote for, that should be a litmus test, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, and it's overwhelmingly Republican, uh, who get all of the, the campaign support and money from the NRA and the gun lobby. But they're out of step with the rest of America. And it's time that we spread that message far and wide in every state, red state, blue state, purple state, it doesn't matter. Because one thing that we have in common as Americans is we care for our families and loved ones. And we can definitely make a dent in this, uh, this tragedy and this, this situation. I want to talk about those that were uh, attacked in Orlando. We, it, it, it's easily said, 
the LGBT community was attacked in Orlando, mm -hmm. and uh, including LGBT members that are of Latin descent. Mm -hmm. Th that's a first in this scope. Right. It was a violation uh, in the LGBT community, which I'm a member of. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, you know, these, these nightclubs uh, are always believed to be a safe haven where you can, uh, you know, be with people that are your friends and you can be yourself. But and, what's interesting and, about and there's a camaraderie yeah. there that's not found anywhere else. But what's interesting about Pulse, as I understand, there were members, alcohol and allies mm -hmm. that were there oh, and sure. lost their oh, lives. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. It's yeah. a different day and age. Mm -hmm. so, when, if you go to a nightclub that has a gay clientele, it's going to definitely have uh, a lot of heterosexual mm -hmm. friends and straight mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and parents and mm -hmm. brothers and sisters and mm -hmm. friends. That's the way it is now. So you can target one group, but you're going to ensnare others. It's, it's, just, it's just craziness. But here's the thing. Because of Orlando, that is this generation's Stonewall. It really is. Stonewall was in 1969 in New York and, you know, the Stonewall riots. What happened in Orlando against the LGBT community is going to galvanize the entire community nationwide and the younger generation. And I got to tell you, those that have been fighting the gun lobby for decades have a new set of allies that they didn't expect they would have. And now they do. And, and, that, is we, and that is the LGBT and community. And millennials. And millennials. And we know how to organize. Mm. We're already organized. So plan plans are already being very well crafted. And you will see a response and a resolve that has been unmatched since these mass shootings became commonplace decades ago, and it's going to change. I, I got to ask you, though, if I may, on a personal level, mm -hmm. Orlando, you, we wake up that morning and we read about the 49 who perished. Then we read in Los Angeles, someone was planning to target the gay pride parade. I mean, how are you doing? You're an elected mm -hmm. official, like you said, a member of the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. You are a potential target, arguably. Mm -hmm. you know, 49 Americans lost their lives. How are you doing? I'm totally unafraid. Mm. I'm not afraid of anything. And we can't be. We mustn't be. There's uh, strength in numbers. You know, crazed killers who have easy access to weapons, which they shouldn't have, which is why we're, what we're talking mm -hmm. about now, mm -hmm. um, are always going to be there. Uh, what we can do is we can make it a lot more difficult to get a military-style assault weapon. Just recently, there was a, a deranged person who comes into the city council who uh, made a very serious mistake and made threatening uh, comments mm -hmm. on comment cards. Well, he's known to have an AK-47 at his house, mm -hmm. and they temporary, temporarily confiscated his gun. Now, what was this deranged person who comes to city council every day mm -hmm. doing with an AK-47 at his house? That underscores the problem. It's very possible he acquired it very legally. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we've got to stop the delusion that there's no connection between but, the Second yeah. Amendment and deranged people having easy access so to weapons. Do you feel as if this is when we turn the page? I mean, I thought after Gabrielle Giffords, this is when we would turn the page for those that support these measures. Sandy Hook, I mean, every time something happens, we're going to turn the page. You would think, and, and time will tell. I feel that we will, because look what the LGBT community has been able to do. Mm. Ten years ago, uh, the fa you know, uh, gay marriage, right. uh, same-sex marriage would have been a, a fantasy unimaginable until uh, you know, you future back? generations. You'll come back? I'll absolutely Please. come back. His name is Mitchell Farrell. He is a councilman in the city of Los Angeles. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Local Edition.